In today's video, we're going to talk about how one year ago today, the spot price of silver came crashing down and gold took a really big hit as well. How the precious metals made a bounce back, along with some of the lessons that I've learned and really everything that's taken place over the last year. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great and staying safe. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I want to talk about how it's the one year mark since the spot price of silver and also gold, collapsed, tanked, came crashing down. Silver got nearly chopped in half. We're gonna get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there, go check it out. The link will be in the description. And if you wanna get some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel, I would really, really, really appreciate it. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. But today is March 18th, 2021. It's two things. Number one, the day after St. Patrick's Day. Thank you, everybody who ordered the Luck Has Nothing to Do With It t-shirts and hoodies. They have now been officially removed from the store and nobody can get them until next year. But judging by the amount of people who placed orders, it seems like everybody got one. So thank you everybody who supported it. If you want to be posted in a video or on Instagram or something like that, send me a picture of you rocking the merchandise and I'll cover out your face if you don't want to be in it. But regardless, thank you everybody who supported it. St. Baldrick says thank you as well. Not only is it the day after St. Patrick's Day, but it's also the one year mark since the spot price of silver and also the spot price of gold came crashing down. March of 2020, and according to the chart that I'm looking at, it was March 18th, 2020, where silver got slashed. Silver fell all the way down to $11.90. It might have even gone lower, but according to this chart right here, this is the only chart that I've seen it go all the way down to $11.90. I believe it was a little bit lower, though. Regardless, silver fell down to a point that nobody even expected. And I remember at the time, for the first time in my stacking journey, I actually saw people say, I'm gonna head out and just jump ship. I saw so many people run away from silver, run away from gold. And by the way, speaking of gold, let me put a little bit of gold on screen because I want to talk about the spot price of gold as well. The spot price of gold at the time fell by... A couple hundred dollars, actually, which sounds pretty drastic, and it is. But what's funny about that is gold dropping by a couple hundred bucks just doesn't seem nearly as dramatic as silver falling by six or seven dollars or whatever it was. I think before silver fell down, it was maybe around the 17 or 18 dollar mark, and then it fell all the way down to just below 12. Gold, on the other hand, fell by a couple hundred dollars. It fell all the way down to $1,482.40 on March 18th, 2020, according to this chart. And I remember so many people jump ship. So many people were scared away from silver and gold. A lot of people have this mentality that when you trade your... Fiat currency glorified IOU dollar bill debt notes for silver and gold and the spot price goes down, that means you lost money. Failing to realize you didn't lose any money. As long as you didn't lose the silver and the gold, you didn't lose any money. Spot price might have taken a little bit of a dip, but ever since day one, I always thought that was a good thing. When I got started SAC in the tail end of 2017, for my first year, the whole year, spot price was doing nothing but steady decline. I started at about $17, and as I was stacking, every month I would pick up new silver coins, rounds, and bars, and spot price was doing nothing but slowly, steadily dropping. Went down to $16.75, $16.50, $16.25, $16, 16 flat. 15.50, it went all the way down to $14. And every single time I would pick up new silver, I wasn't stacking a whole lot of gold at the time. Every single time I would pick up some new silver, I would get excited because every time I would place an order online or make a conversion at the local coin shop, 
I was getting a better bang for my buck every single time. Each time I can get the same amount of silver for a slightly lesser dollar amount. I considered it to be somewhat of a discount or a sale or something like that. I thought it was a good thing. And a lot of people saw the massive drop in March of 2020 as a good thing as well. A lot of people bought into stocks. A lot of people bought into a lot of different things. But when it comes to silver and gold, a lot of people went full throttle or at least they attempted to go full throttle. I mean, after all, silver fell down to under $12 when at the time we were all used to $16, $17, $18 silver and now boom, all of a sudden $11.90. Who wouldn't want to get a whole bunch of silver at that point? And a lot of people tried and a lot of people failed. And the reason for this was because as soon as that happened, almost every single online precious metal dealing website put up this banner on their site saying due to low inventory or due to too many orders coming in, they're unable to fulfill new orders. And when that started to settle down a little bit, the spot price started to climb a little bit back up. It went from $11.90 to, I don't know, maybe $13 or $14. But does that mean we were getting silver for $13, $14? Absolutely not. Because the same websites that told us we cannot sell any silver to you because we either don't have any silver or too many people are ordering silver and we cannot get to you. The same exact websites cranked up the premiums through the roof. And it wasn't just to get the fiat dollar bill amount back to where it was. Keep in mind, spot price, let's just, let's call it $18 before it fell. $18 before it fell plus, let's just say a $2 premium brings a troy ounce of silver up to about 20 bucks. But now that spot price fell down to under 12 and climbed back to maybe 14 or so, one would probably not be all too surprised if these online precious metal dealers were sticking a $6 premium instead of a $2 premium just to bring the total amount per troy ounce to about 20 bucks. But we didn't see $6 premiums. We saw seven, eight, nine, ten dollar premiums. And guess what? Spot price climbed back up to where it was, around the eighteen dollar mark, which is the point it was at right before it fell. And the premiums kept going up. Spot price of silver was getting pretty close to the twenty dollar range. I remember it went up to nineteen dollars and ninety-five cents or something like that. And I was saying to myself at the time, Please don't surpass the $20 mark. Please don't do it. Please stay in the teens. I wanted silver to stay as low as possible. And here we are a year later, and I still want silver to stay as low as possible. I would love for silver to fall down again. I would love for the spot price of silver to fall by several dollars. The lower, the better. Like I said, I consider it to be a sale. I consider it to be a discount. And a lot of people were saying promising, guaranteeing, saying, mark my words, silver will never, ever surpass the $20 mark again. It ain't going to happen. It's not in the cards. It's not a part of the plan. They even made bets. And I'll put something right here on screen. Pretty funny. Spot press will never hit $20 again. And the person who left that comment, spot price of silver surpassed the $20 mark the next day. A lot of people have been saying, oh, silver's not going to do anything. It's a waste of time, waste of money, waste of space, silver's garbage, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I received a comment the day before silver hit $20 an ounce from somebody saying, mark my word, silver will never hit $20 again. And then sure enough, not even 12 hours later, boom, proven wrong. <laughs> This is why it's important not to listen to random people on the internet making psychic predictions and guaranteeing that certain things are going to happen or certain things are not going to happen or promising or guaranteeing or, or making these financial claims. Take it with a grain of salt. At the end of the day, 
No one seems to know what they're talking about. But spot price hit the $20 mark. Now you might be wondering, what's the big difference between $19 and 95 cents and now officially $20? Well, that was the first time silver hit the $20 mark in several, several, several years. And up until that point, a lot of people were sleeping on silver. A lot of people were counting silver out. Silver was the underdog. Not a lot of people believed in silver. A lot of people were underestimating silver. A lot of people didn't have much faith in silver. So when silver surpassed the $20 mark, for the first time in years, silver started making headlines. Silver started making the news. Everyone was talking about silver. The people who love silver, quite like myself, I mean, I had been posting videos about silver since the very end of 2017. I went all of 2018, all of 2019, talking about silver pretty much every single day. The first couple months of 2020, I was still talking about silver almost every single day. And the days that I wasn't talking about silver, I was either talking about gold or prepping supplies. Friendly reminder, the Big Berkey water purification system, the Nesco food dehydrator, the Jackery Explorer 500 portable power station, and the Solo Stove Campfire portable fire pit and cooking stove will all be linked in the description. Those are my four favorite prepping products that I own. Regardless, I was talking about silver pretty much every single day. It was what this entire channel was, for the most part, built by talking about. So the people who loved silver, the people who liked silver, respected silver, appreciated silver, or were interested in silver, they were obviously still talking about silver. The people who hated silver or were belittling silver in the past, all of a sudden they were proven wrong and they were starting to come around, so now they were talking about silver. The people who don't even talk about silver or don't even talk about precious metals, silver hitting the $20 mark was pretty big financial news at the time. So the real estate guys, the stock market guys, everyone started talking about silver. And the people who had no idea that silver stacking was even a thing, the people who just were introduced to precious metals last year, all of a sudden it was a brand new concept for them, something that intrigued them or piqued their interest. And they were talking about silver. So there was all of this hype and excitement and it just drove the premiums up even higher. Spot price continued to climb. It went from $20 to $22, $24, $27, $29, dollars 29 I was getting scared. I remember at $19 and change, I was saying, God, please don't hit $20. And it hit $20. Now here I was, $10 up, $29 and change, saying, please, God, don't hit $30. And thankfully, it didn't. It didn't hit $30. It came really close. But then we saw a little bit of a pullback. We saw it drop down to $26, $27. And for a couple of months, that's pretty much where it sat. It was fluctuating in the $25, $26, $27 range. Not a whole lot of movement, not a whole lot of activity. Then it dropped a little bit again. Then it jumped back up. And it's been in the mid 20s ever since. And unfortunately, I think the current spot price right now, which by the way, as I'm recording the video, is $26.08. Not as I'm editing it, not as I'm posting it, not as you're watching it, but that's the current spot price as I'm filming it. By the way, speaking of which, head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're watching the video and the current spot price as you're watching. I'm always curious. And then as for gold, the current spot price is $1,734.80. So we can see silver and also gold have made some moves. Silver hit a six or a seven year high. And even in late January, early February, I don't remember exactly when it was, silver actually hit the $30 mark for just a split second. And then it came right back down. It was like the blink of an eye. It hit 30 and then went back to $29 and change. And then now it's kind of sitting in the $26 range. Gold hit a brand new all-time high last year as well. So the precious metals, they made moves in 2020. They made headlines 
in 2020. They proved people wrong in 2020, which I will be honest, I know a lot of people have the mentality where almost everything they do in life, they're driven by trying to prove people wrong. And, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but I have found that it's best not to worry about proving people wrong. I would much rather prove myself right. And the silver and the gold, they were proving me right. I believed in silver, I believed in gold. I prioritize silver over gold, I still do. I consider silver to be the opportunity metal. I believe there's far more room for growth, far more room to perform over time as years and decades go by. Gold, not to say that it's not going to grow or that I don't believe it's going to grow. I do believe it's going to grow. I believe gold will continue to climb as well. But I think if and when the gold to silver ratio gap closes in, I believe it would primarily have more to do with silver going up rather than gold going down. Because I don't think gold is going to go down without silver going down. If they take a dip, if there's a pullback, it's more than likely going to be both metals. Silver, what I would consider to be arguably, potentially, the most undervalued asset on the planet, potentially. That's not financial advice, by the way. I'm not a financial advisor, and nothing on this channel is ever financial advice. Do your own research, form your own opinions, make your own decisions based off of your conclusions, not mine, but the conclusion that I came to based off of a couple of years of experience with the precious metals, a couple of years of researching, a couple of years of studying the charts, and it's not just the precious metal charts, by the way. I think it's important to pay attention to all of the markets. Of course, you got to pay attention to the markets you're involved in, but I think it's just as important to pay attention to the markets that you have no involvement in or aren't affiliated with in any way, shape, or form. There's a lot of people out there who do not invest in the stock market. They, maybe they don't believe in the stock market, they don't trust the stock market, whatever the case may be. If you don't want to invest in the stock market, I personally don't care. Don't invest in the stock market. It doesn't matter to me. But you should still pay attention to the stock market. And by the way, speaking of the stock market, we're pretty much at an all-time high right now. We're also at an all-time high for real estate. We're seeing precious metals way, way up. We're seeing the premiums way, 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 way up. We're seeing almost an everything bubble, if that makes sense. This is what a lot of the quote-unquote experts are referring to it as. A bubble. There's a lot of people making predictions as they did last year, as they did the year before, and as they did the year before that, hoping to eventually get it right. So far, the overwhelming majority of these quote-unquote experts have a 100% failure rate for a track record. So it's very important not to pay attention to these psychic predictions. Please don't pay attention to that. Look at the charts. Look at the graphs, look at the general state of the economy, look at the unemployment numbers, look at what's going wrong, look at what's going right. Silver, for example, if you want to talk about things that are going right for silver, silver has more than 10,000 different uses. Silver is an unbelievably versatile metal. Silver is the greatest conductor of both heat and electricity. It's the most reflective metal in the world. It's used in batteries, cars, photography, medicine, silverware, jewelry. Silver is used so many different ways. It's used in solar panels. And what are we seeing more and more and more and more of as time goes by? We're seeing more and more and more people transition to solar. We're seeing more and more and more people transition to EVs, electric vehicles. And that's not even scratching the surface. Those are just two quick little examples that I can give as to why I believe silver will continue to climb. Silver will continue to be in demand. Silver will continue to be used in so many different areas, so many different fields, so many different sectors and 
companies and industries and organizations, silver is a very important metal. A lot of people don't realize how important, how vital silver actually is. We see silver as cool looking coins, rounds, and bars for the most part, but all of these different industries, keep in mind, silver is not just a precious metal. It's a precious metal for us, but it's an industrial metal for them. Just like copper. Copper is an industrial metal, which is not a precious metal. Speaking of which, I have a little bit of copper over here. I love the beautiful red metal. Story for a different video. Point being is that silver is incredibly important. For us, many of us are using it as a hedge against inflation. Many of us are using it to preserve wealth for the long term. Many of us are using it as just a, a mere store of value, a physical at-home savings account. But it's important to remember, that's just one of its uses. It has 9,999 others. Probably more than that, to be honest with you. Silver is an incredibly important metal. And what we saw take place a year ago today, according to that chart, when silver essentially collapsed, silver got cut nearly in half, dropped by, what, 30 to 40 percent or something like that. That was a little bit of a wake-up call. That was a little bit of a heads up for what's to come, in my opinion at least. I don't know for sure. But I took it as a red flag. And a lot of people missed the signal. A lot of people, they saw what happened, and they went running for the hills. And that was the first time in my life I actually saw people selling off due to fear. Keep in mind, I had only been involved since the very end of 2017. 2018 was my first full year. 2019 was my second full year. 2020 and what happened in 2020 was the very beginning of my third year. I hadn't been involved for a very long time. I'm currently at the beginning of my fourth year. That's no time at all. That's the infant stages. Three years, four years, that's no time at all. In the grand scheme of things, that's just like a split second. And I was not involved in the stock market prior to silver. I was only involved in business. Still to this day, I am not involved in real estate, unless of course you consider real estate investment trusts to be real estate, which they are, but it's real estate on paper. I'm talking about owning land, properties, houses, buildings, and stuff like that. I don't own any buildings, I don't own any property, I don't own any land at the moment. In the near future, I hope to change that but at this current point in time, I have nothing. So that was the first time in my life I actually saw people firsthand. I witnessed it. People selling off due to fear. And I was told during my first year and during my second year that during the dips, during the pullbacks, when a lot of people get scared and sell because they're afraid of losing money or they want to cut their losses or whatever the case may be, I was told at the very beginning that it would happen. And I knew it would happen. I believed that it would happen. I just hadn't experienced it yet. I hadn't seen it. I hadn't witnessed it. I was told from the very beginning that it was inevitable and that all it meant was that the weak ones were getting shaken out. If you need to sell because you need the cash, that's a different story. If you're going through financial hardships or some unexpected emergency takes place, that's what the silver and gold's for. An emergency fund, it's there to store value. It's there to protect your money. If you need to use it, you might not want to do it, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Nothing wrong with that. If you needed to sell because you had to take care of some type of financial priority, that's a completely different story. I'm talking about the people who got scared because they thought it was gonna go lower. Silver all of a sudden gets smacked in the face and people genuinely thought that it was gonna go to zero. People sold their gold as well. 
You really thought gold was going to go to zero? It's never gone to zero. Silver's never gone to zero. But hey, some people are driven by emotions rather than logic. And unfortunately for them, a lot of people sold when silver was really low. And a lot of those same people bought back in at $22, $23, $24 an ounce plus a $7 premium. So some people make emotional decisions. I'm here to encourage you to make logical decisions. Study the trends, study the charts, study the graphs, study the history, study all of the markets and come to a rational conclusion before you start moving your money around or before you start moving your currency around. Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to what took place a year ago today according to the chart. What are your thoughts on March of 2020's crash? when it comes to the crash of everything, but more specifically the crash of the precious metals. And if anybody's interested in joining the Precious Metals VIP Club, it's where I can do things on my own terms, not on YouTube's terms, my terms. I'm hosting privately held live streams. They're smaller and easier to manage. I'm also doing giveaways, discounts, personalized promo codes, shout outs, deal alerts when silver and gold is on sale on a variety of different websites. And of course you can watch all my videos early and commercial free. Come join the Precious Metals VIP Club. It'll be the first link in the description. You're invited. I'd be happy to have you. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. If you guys like me, make sure to hit that subscribe button like a Karen hits a bus window. Or hit the subscribe button like a Karen hits another Karen. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there. Go check it out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit 2,000 subscribers. We just hit 1,900, and I appreciate that. I'm having a little bit of a race with myself. My main channel is only about 200 subscribers away from 15,000, and my backup channel is only about 50 subscribers away from 2,000. Which one do you think is going to hit the milestone first? Head on down to the comments and let me know. And if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way please consider getting yourself some dydss merchandise of course we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies which are up for grabs along with a ton of other products t-shirts hoodies even stickers many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations such as the recently released kraken stackin t-shirt hoodie sticker and coffee mug inspired by the beautiful two ounce silver Kraken coin, which by the way is helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for ocean cleanup charity organizations at no additional cost to you. It comes out of my pocket, not yours. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. And I want you guys to head on down in the comments and let me know once again, what are your thoughts on Everything silver has done over the last year, everything silver has shown itself able to do. A lot of people were doubting silver. A lot of people were counting silver out. A lot of people were saying that it's never going to hit $20 ever again. The rest of eternity, it's never going to hit $20. And the next day it hits $20. I even had people recently say silver's never going to hit $30, to which I responded, Silver hit $30 for a split second just a couple of weeks ago. What in the world are you talking about? A lot of people make these weird psychic predictions or make these financial claims, but I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know what are your thoughts on everything Silver has done all the way from essentially collapsing down to below $12 an ounce to climbing its way all the way back up to now sitting in the mid-20s. When did you get started stacking? Did 2020 wake you up? I know a lot of people got started stacking just last year after the crash, after everything crashed. A lot of people dove into the silver and the gold at that point. Maybe they didn't even know silver and gold stacking was even a thing. Maybe they were just on Google or YouTube looking for alternative ways to save money or protect their money or store value rather than allowing their fiat glorified IOU debt notes to do nothing but depreciate in value over time. Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, 
Don't you dare sound smiley. Peace.